Not the normal mode of maintenance steam transport, but this is not a normal station. That's the purpose of this video, to give you the facts on Fair Isle. To explain what this station does, it's necessary to study the programme distribution in the north of Scotland. The most northerly link-fed station is Rosemarkey on the Black Isle near Inverness. The station in Caithness, Rumster Forest, picks up off-air signals from Rosemarkey, BBC One and BBC Two on UHF, and Radio Two, Radio Three and Radio Scotland on VHF. Keelilang Hill in Orkney also uses off-air pickup this time from Rumster Forest, although there are opt-out facilities from Radio Scotland. The distance between Orkney and Bressy, the main station in Shetland, is over 100 miles, and direct off-air reception is impossible. So it's most convenient to find that the tiny island of Fair Isle is almost exactly halfway between Orkney and Shetland. The link station on the island picks up VHF and UHF signals off-air from Orkney, and sends them on to Bressy on SHF or microwave link. The link station is an IBA site with the BBC and British Telecom as other users. Mains power comes from a British Telecom maintained diesel power station elsewhere on the island. There's no conventional main supply on Fair Isle. We'll now look at the equipment used on the station, starting with the television chain. For clarity, only one service has been shown and the UHF trough receiving aerials have been omitted. Vision and sound outputs from the receivers are fed into the diversity switch. Inside the diversity switch, both vision chains are corrected for luminance and chrominance amplitude. The vision noise is measured, and the better of the two vision signals is switched to the SHF link transmitters. The diversity switch incorporates 19 kHz tone detectors, so that although the sound is normally switched with vision, Failure of one sound chain will not stop vision switching in the normal manner. As television sound is being carried on a stereo NICAM link, both main and reserve sound outputs are encoded for extra backup. As the diversity switch is common to both main and reserve chains, and a fault is potentially capable of failing both, an important feature is a built-in bypass relay for both sound and vision. For clarity, this is not shown on the diagram. The SHF transmitters are both continually powered, changeover being by means of a waveguide switch. The diversity switch provides several indications for the fault reporter. There's a sync detector in each vision chain as well as a pilot tone detector in each audio path, and failure of either sound or vision in a chain will give a receiver A or receiver B indication as appropriate. Under fault conditions, the diversity switch can bypass itself, routing the unequalized output from receiver A to SHF transmitter A, and likewise B to B. As the diversity switch is bypassed, there will be no program passing through it, and the AFR will send out three alarms, receiver A fail, receiver B fail, and diversity fail. It's easy to think on seeing these indications that there is a loss of program, so remember that the receiver indications are derived from the diversity switch. Diversity fail will automatically produce the two receiver fail alarms. Each link modulator has its own monitoring shelf, and loss of sinks or 19 kHz out of a modulator will give a traffic alarm, traffic A or traffic B as the case may be. If both modulators fail, then a circuit failed alarm is given. Although only priority two in the full directory, circuit failed is the link station equivalent of a shutdown indication on a transmitting station and should not be ignored. Each radio service has two stereo receivers with associated program changeover equipment on the output. For clarity, only one pair of receivers is shown. All A receivers are fed from the A side VHF aerial via an aerial distribution amplifier with identical arrangements on the B-side. The selected audio output is fed to the appropriate NICAM bay. The NICAM equipment consists of duplicate sets of three coders, each set feeding its own multiplexer. Each coder can accept a stereo pair, and the inputs to both A and B coders are paralleled. As the coder inputs are high impedance, 
600 ohm terminations are fitted before the coder U-links. It's important to realize that only A-side or B-side coders can be used at any one time, and not a combination of both. The control unit on the coder bay enables the feed to be locked to A or B coders, or left on the auto position. It's not possible to prefer the B coders. Here is the allocation of channels for link 1. Normally the multiplexer is fitted in the X coders. In this case the X coders are allocated to a future Radio 1 VHF service and are not in use. So the multiplexers are fitted in the Y or Radio 2 coders. A spare coder occupies the XB position though, but it's not wired in and is only used to provide 100% spares capability. The BBC 1 channel through the Z coders is stereo capable. So the main and reserve sound outputs from the diversity switch are fed to the left and right channels to provide additional backup. In the case of Link 2, the X coders carry Radio 3, Y coders Radio Scotland, and Z coders BBC 2 Sound, with the multiplexers in the X or Radio 3 coders. The 2048 kilobit bitstream from the multiplexer in use feeds both the four PSK modulators. The 7.5 MHz subcarrier output is added to the vision on the inputs to the SHF link transmitters. The NICAM equipment has comprehensive monitoring. A main program alarm, either a radio service such as VR3 main program or television sound such as UT2 main program sound can be caused by a coder, multiplexer or loss of program into the NICAM such as a receiver failure. Failure of both receivers, coders or multiplexers will produce a shutdown indication on that service. The TV receiver monitoring is by means of 19 kHz detectors. However, the radio receivers are monitored with program detectors and are thus, especially in the case of Radio 3, liable to give alarms during long, quiet passages. NICAM alarms are of two types, digital, such as the PCM coder Digital A, and channel monitor, such as PCM coder channel monitor A. As there are only A and B alarms, a coder or channel monitor alarm will always produce a main program alarm to indicate which service is faulty. For example, a failure of the Radio 3 A side channel monitor will produce the following indications. PCM coder channel monitor A and VR3 main program. The channel monitors, which are comparators comparing the program input with the output of a low-grade digital decoder on the coder output, have been prone to produce vast numbers of spurious alarms and are still the subject of many modifications. Finally, it's worth mentioning that there are conventional B, C, X, Y and Z mutes on the AFR, while on all services a miscellaneous indication usually indicates an item of equipment left on manual control. So much for the theory. We'll now go to the station where the Shetland maintenance team have just arrived. Entry to the building as well as the IBA BBC equipment area is by means of a standard C key. The immunity area in Fair Isle Link Station, which has that lived in look because we've got British Telecom personnel in residence at the moment. We're about to go into the BBC IBA equipment room. As you can see, there's not a lot of room to work. The BBC have eight bays of equipment in Fair Isle. Because of the lack of space, we can only show you half of them at once. Here we have the UHF receivers and the SHF transmitters. The band 2 stereo receivers, monitoring and control equipment. The Link 2 NICAM equipment, whilst behind me is the Link 1 NICAM equipment. And tucked away in the corner here is the TV NICAM combining equipment. We'll start with the TV rack. At the bottom we have two standard UHF receivers one synchronous and one asynchronous. Above that we have a, team, uh, a telephone type TM1M1E 
And then above the audio and video link panels, we have the SHF transmitter control and monitoring equipment. And then above that, we have a TV diversity switch. At the top of the bay, we have the TV receiving aerial filters and splitters. I don't propose to describe the receivers and foot reporter because they're common pieces of BBC equipment. The SHF monitoring and control equipment is fairly self-evident from the front panel and is very adequately covered in the on-station handbook. The TV diversity switch will be unfamiliar to most people as it's only used over difficult rebroadcast paths although a modified version of it is used for outside broadcasts. It's important to remember that it works on normal 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak video and zero level sound. In other words, it is not an IF or an RF diversity switch. It has two channels, nominally RBL and RBS. It corrects the luminance and chrominance on each of these and also measures the noise. And then uses some complex decision logic to feed the best signal to the SHF transmitter currently in use. Fortunately, for those of you who may be here on an emergency visit, it can be bypassed. The SHF equipments are MAL 7010 transmitters. And the A and B transmitters are housed in the same cabinet. This is BBC Two's cabinet. Supplies at the bottom, modulators, a metering card, and at the top we have the Solens diode amplifier slabs. Common faults with this equipment are supply lockout due to mains dips and also ADA failure. Now, whereas we don't have any spares for these on site, they can be quite easily bypassed using pieces of waveguide which are kept on site for the purpose. Incidentally, this cabinet does have a back and front, but with so much equipment in a small space, hot spots do develop and are certainly a problem at Fair Isle. The Bantu receiver bay. Aerial distribution amplifiers top and bottom with receivers for Radio 2, Radio 3 and Radio Scotland. And there's room for Radio 1 when that goes in. Monitoring is done using program failure monitors. So as usual, there are occasional failure alarms during quiet programs. Changeover is done uh, from an auto and a manual in a fairly standard way. A Nikon coder bay, in this case the one for link two. Three A coders, one for Radio 3, Radio Scotland and BBC2 sound, control and monitoring, and then we have the B coders, also Radio 3, Radio Scotland, and BBC2 sound. Our teething troubles have been largely to do with switch mode power supplies and monitoring alignment. The output from the selected Nikon multiplexer is used to modulate a 7.5 megs subcarrier, which is then added to the video signal. All four modulators, link 1 A and B and link 2 A and B, are in this tiny rack here. So far we've had no trouble with it. Such is the shortage of space in the technical area that these two cupboards here in the amenity area hold BBC handbooks 
and spares. It's vital that all go-home checks are scrupulously adhered to at Fair Isle. Receivers on AGC, diversity switch on auto and normal local.